Ashley, Cynthia Rose Young Schlosser, Franco Di Nicolo, and Dr. Alfred Lambermont Webb. You guys want to just star six and come in and say hi really quick? Hi there. Hello. That's, that's Hello. Michael, that's Cynthia. Doctor? I thought I heard him. Dr. Alfred? Yes, can, can you hear me? Oh, there you are. Well, let's start with you, Dr. Alfred. I always like to have our guests introduce themselves and just, you know, give us a brief two, three minute history, who you are and some, sure. some links, important links you would like us to have. And yeah. speak slowly on the links and clear. And we'll, when the, uh, YouTube is up, we'll write those on as you're speaking. Oh, so thank welcome, you. Dr. Alfred Lambermont Webb. How are you? I, I'm fine, thank you. Um, I'm a futurist. Um, and I've uh, been working in the multidimensional world for over 40 years. Um, and uh, during that time, I have uh, uh, developed the science of exopolitics, which is the science of relations among intelligent civilizations in the multiverse. And you can um, look at ongoing work in that area by going to exopolitics.com. I have also uh, released a book this year uh, that'll be um, uh, published again by Inner Traditions and Baron Company toward the end of 2015 on the Omniverse. Uh, humans have been talking about the universe then the multiverse, and now the omniverse, which is the totality of all the universes in the multiverse, plus the spiritual dimensions that we can now uh, uh, fully uh, 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 talk about and navigate using the instrumentality and data replicable data of the scientific method. It's no longer the afterlife and uh, the human soul and concepts of God and source are no longer a matter of faith, but they're now a matter of science. Uh, and it's the time of the integration of science and spirituality. And that, uh, and, uh, uh, that book is called The Dimensional Ecology of the Omniverse. And uh, you can find out more about that at omniversity.info. And then um, finally, uh, uh, we founded a, a news agency because we find that it's, that it's the mainstream media and it's memes that are really uh, brainwashing and mind controlling humanity as to a particularly uh, fixed story of what's going on on the planet uh, that, that favors their particular power matrix. Um, and uh, you can go to our news, news agency at newsinsideout.com and uh, we'll turn the news inside out for you. So those are our three sites. Awesome, Alfred. You know, I looked for that Inside Out News because I know you just have that new, and it, it came up that the Dominion is for sale. So can you please send it's, me that link on private message Facebook, and I will add it to the blog under you. Oh, Let's do that. well, it's not, it's not for sale, I'll tell you that. Yeah, send me the right link, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now I want Franco to come on, introduce himself. And before that, Franco and Alfred, I want to let you know both that Franco and Alfred are both from Canada. Uh, did you know that, Alfred? I, I did not. Yeah, you guys both live in Canada. And Franco, I want to tell you the story of Alfred. And well, me and Alfred and Tolek and um, uh, Laura, Dwight, D Laura Eisenhower. And I don't remember the other ones right now. We were all on a round table. Uh, the people from Hawaii um, did that round table. 
And I remember, Alfred, I heard you a little bit, Alfred, before the call started, that roundtable, and said you were just finishing up with um, Paul Halnier and a Franco Di Nicolo, that conference that Franco and them held three or four months ago. And, and I could tell that you just met Franco, and then when I commented on the roundtable that the timelines have merged, and I could tell you learned that from Franco that day, which I hadn't listened to that Franco yet. I did afterwards. So I, I immediately messaged you for to have a roundtable with Franco because I knew you'd love to do that. So oh, good. isn't that cool? So Great. isn't that cool, <laughs> Dr. Nelson? Yes, yes. I mean, uh, it seems that there's a convergence of, of, of everyone's work. Yes, beautiful. I like how the universe puts us together in surprising ways. So, Franco Di Nicolo, my brother, my friend, how are you? I'm doing excellent, and uh, thank you for letting me know about Alfred being in Canada. I, I thought he was uh, he was American, but uh, it's uh, it's great that there's uh, an upstart Canadian uh, doing the work, and uh, you know, us coming together, we're all contributing, we're all playing a, a specific role for for the advancement of movement, and it's it's fantastic. I, I must say, I mean, I, and I will share this with everybody. I mean, I've been on this uh, this walk for some time, and I call it a walk, but it's not really on this journey. Basically, uh, in coming to assist humanity, and uh, from day one that I arrived on the planet, uh, it felt very lonely because there was no one to connect with. And where we are right now. It's just phenomenal because there's so many that have come together to uh, participate and to facilitate and to all do our various specific roles. And, and even the, uh, the, uh, not only the energies, but the information, the, uh, the work is all inter intertwining and it supports each one. So in essence, everybody's coming from different directions uh, to do their part. And of course, it's like building any new world, new structure, new new reality, uh, it, it's just uh, phenomenal. So it's, it's always a pleasure when I connect with other uh, beautiful souls that are doing uh, amazing work uh, out there. So uh, thank right. you for making it possible, Elizabeth. You're welcome. Franco, I want you to start with how you're a unified soul, and if you could put it like in two, two words, <laughs> two or three sentences, and how you're the only one on Earth that's special, but we're all, we, all of us are snowflakes. We're the only one on Earth special but for a special job kind of a little tweak about that and uh, yeah. what about your retreats and your links and stuff thank you oh absolutely absolutely okay well uh everybody's special everybody is a uh, source itself having a human experience or or whatever other experience is having based on wherever planet you're on um uh, as for myself the soul that's in my body i came here specifically it's a unified soul that means that it, it is a multitude of souls that have completed their journey in enlightenment and they have merged, you know. So you're basically having the fragment, because we're all fragmented souls, and all our fragmented souls really come from one soul, which is basically source itself, so the, the, uh, the, the full unit uh, of all existence. But in essence, uh, the soul acts basically had been merging with other aspects of itself, from from uh, soul partner to, or what we call soul the twin soul then it starts to go into soul families and, and it's already in the third stage of uh, soul family. So the soul as it stands up as of February, uh, sorry, January the 20th, there's 60 souls uh, that have combined. And uh, basically uh, with that, and then the soul itself has, uh, has achieved alignment, which means it basically has access to source code to the fullest degree and full uh, understanding. And it has, because the souls come from all over the planet, from all over the universes and all the multiverses, is that it actually, you, you have, if you look at it, it's really an alien, but a multi-faceted alien soul that has decided to come onto the planet Earth to assist with this ship. So it took on a regular body to a certain degree. The operating system is slightly different, but in essence, everything is accelerated. So my work is basically to share higher consciousness, my encodement, the work that I do here as an encodement, when I say I, I'm talking about the soul, through the physicality, uh, is to activate, initiate, and fully encode oneness. Basically, reconnection of us all being one unit, working beautifully while having individualized fragments of self, but everything that is done from this point in time 
uh, with this uh, unification taking place is that everything is done looking at the whole, meaning seeing every facet of the self. So it's no longer an isolated self, it is a what we call a unified self, meaning that all aspects of self, all part and parcel, anything that you do, anything that you work with is affecting every part of it, even though that was always the case before, but we've also isolated ourselves in that encodement of separation. I won't go through all those details. Um, anyways, that's the, the work. I do a majority of my work is behind the scenes, out of body, uh, going in and, and encoding and making changes in not only in the collective consciousness and the matrix and the, uh, the, the various uh, uh, bridging and re-encoding of uh, the human experience, but also the planetary grids and all that stuff. It's, it's not so much what everybody else talks about. It goes right into the nitty-gritty of the operating system, per se. The other work I actually do is I do lectures. I do uh, basically seminars, talk shows, whatever it is at this point in time to share higher consciousness. And I'm not the type that goes into, and when I say my type, it's just the soul doesn't really go from, uh, say, baby steps. It basically says, listen, if we're going to look at an operating system, we're going to look at a way of life. We're going to look at it, how we're experiencing now, but we're going to give you really the true access to actually how it actually functions. And then you can take the steps in between rather than saying, okay, you know, we have no worth or self-worth, or whatever it is, and now we have to play with self-worth, self-love, and all that stuff. But basically, uh, that would be another step into another another stage of experiencing. But in my case, what I do is basically say, I look at the truth of truth, if you want to call it that, the actual uh, master operating system, and say, okay, none of that exists. In essence, this is our true essence. And this is how we actually operate. It's up to us how we want to navigate from one to the other rather than just giving you one story versus the next, because basically everything is made up anyways, as you know, as part of our experience. Um, I've also joined forces with uh, Cambridge Center, which we now are creating within it, we have already started with it, uh, a oneness center. And the center is basically itself is a hub to have people from all over the world come there and to expose themselves in a way of understanding how we are all one, and how we actually change our way of looking at life, the way we change, look at uh, our realities and experiences, and to work together to create not so much solutions, but new levels of experiences so that it, it supports every facet of every single uh, part of the human experience, the planet's experience, and everything on the planet, but also preparing for all our brother sister souls from other planets to to engage, being from the Earth, to the, the ones that are coming from our, within our quadrant of our galaxies that are quite related and quite excited to work with us, and beyond. So in essence, that's where the center is. So we are having many different, uh, uh, what we call workshops, we are having different retreats and so forth that are, are all specific to the first one we're doing, which is coming in uh, the 20, 21st, and 22nd, I think it is, of Jan uh, February. That's about uh, basically clearing, releasing, and letting go. And that is focused on letting go of our old patterns, our old stories, our old belief systems, or whatever we have adopted and identified ourselves. We uh, it is uh, focused on that. And it's yeah. So Franco, can you give the link? Yes. So it's not up yet. It will be up uh, this week. And uh, what well, the site's up? I have mean, to say that particular uh, seminar or what we call. Uh -huh. it. Retreat, and it's at uh, onenesscenter.ca. Now, center is spelled S. Uh, sorry, C E N T R E instead of E R. Because that's a Canada thing, right? The Canada thing, yes. So now, so at Kingsbrook Center, tell us where that is, kind of, so Alfred kind of gets an idea where how close yes. that is to him. The center itself is located uh, at uh, King City which is basically uh, Jane Street and King Road. So it's very close to the 400, if, uh, if uh, Alfred, Alfred is familiar with that. So it's uh, 400, and you just get off on King Road, and you just go east one street, and then it's Jane, and you just go south uh, a few hundred uh, feet, 
it's called it that, and uh, the driveway is there, and that goes into it. It's on a, a, over 100 acres of land. It's in the middle of uh, nature itself. It's quite an ex expansive uh, center. I mean, if you go to the website, you'll see what facilities are there. It's been around yeah. for a while. It used to be, you know, once upon a time, it was called King's Ranch, uh, which was created as a luxury spa by the owners of uh, Four Seasons Hotel and also Shopper's Drug Park. But then it had uh, it didn't do well, so it became the CIBC Center, which because the bank for cook for closed it and took, took over it, and then it was bought by a uh, gentleman, uh, John Abeli, uh from uh, United States, uh, from Vermont, that is the owner of Boston Scientific, to create a center of this nature, but haven't been really been able to get it off the ground to the same degree. But now we're kind of working together to make it uh, exactly what his part of his dream was. But it was something that uh, you know was showing up as something I needed to do. Uh, yeah, so that's awesome, Franco. I tried to get that down to one of those retreats. I didn't make it. One of these days, Franco, I'll be there, and I'm going to bring Lily, and uh, I'll bring a whole a, a whole entourage, okay, with me. <laughs> Looking forward to it. And people that can't come, we do live stream them, so you're you're there with us at the same time. So uh, once it's available, you know, people that if you can't come it's always great to, to be together but if you can't if everything is live stream so in essence mm -hmm. uh you can uh, be part of it even though and everybody can find a franco on franco d nicola dot com too d e n i c o l a dot com and then masterpiece life dot com uh masterpiece life dot com yes and there's activations with him and james foo and by the way alfred and Cynthia and, um, oh my gosh, a doctor, Alfred Webb, Franco and Cynthia, they all can be found on Facebook if you want to friend them. And you can go to the Diamonds blog and see how they spell their name. And there's links there. Any other links you want to give, Franco? And then we'll go yeah, to the Cynthia. Other, the other one is basically collective evolution. So it's collective underscore evolution dot com. Uh, that is actually a website that gives you. Uh, information on all from from what's happening behind the scenes uh, to what's happening on the planet with with uh, what we can call uh, the different industries, systems, uh, governmental, you name it, uh, covering uh, health and covering all. But but it's actually giving you non bullshit news, basically information. <laughs> it doesn't come. Uh, package with belief systems, and this is the way it may be or may not be. Uh, it's a huge website. It has close to 15 million, sometimes over 15 million hits a, a week. Uh, so it is, and it's being recommended now by a lot of other uh, sites too. Uh, so and, a and lot by of the way, yeah, and by the way, Franco is not in it for the money. His retreats are very, very. Uh, I mean, below average, and he just, you know, he's a love of the people, so I'll put that out too. Okay. Well, it's, it's really everything that I do is to assist humanity. That's the only purpose I'm here. It's not that I get anything out of benefit here of having pleasure in that aspect of it. I mean, it, it, it to me, the pleasure is to be around people to do what I have to do. Uh, because Absolutely. I feel Thank nice. you, Franco. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, we'll bring you back on here shortly. Now we have Cynthia Rose Young Schlosser. Come on on, sweetheart. Well, after that, I have to speak for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, pre I'll prelude to Cynthia. If you introduce yourself, give any links you want, and please put in regarding your paintings, the Law of One, how, you know, I'll call you an expert on that, and you've been working with veterans with your husband, your late husband, and how you were alone for 14 years, if you could put that in two or three minutes and anything else you want. Thank you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. I'll remind you. <laughs> okay, let, let me just skip over the whole thing and tell you what I'm doing. <laughs> my assignment right now is to connect um, in math and geometry and uh, geometric solids, the law of one and the set. And they yeah, have, since she right. knows a lot about astrology, and she can put it into real life, into your life uh, for you, which tells you where we're going and everything. Yeah, too, and right? it's not just sex between male and female in human form. It's the electromagnetic fluid. It's um, when the one, which is the dot, 
uh, decides to become the two, which is a line. And wow. then how the two becomes the three, which is a pyramid. And how the three becomes the four, and that's probably as far as I'm, I would even try today to go. But they, they are first two-dimensional, and then they become three-dimensional, and how that works. It's really very simple. But yeah. um, it's a sexual universe, and it's what makes us not only move forward, but expand. And it yeah. creates the geometric solid. You know, the, the uh, sphere, the pyramid, the cube, etc. And how that works, that's very, very simple. Absolutely. And it unites all the different sciences. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it, it, it unites psychology, it unites uh, philosophy, it unites math and quantum physics, it unites uh, all of them. And now, the un understandable whole. Absolutely. Now, start just start back when you spent, was it 12 or 14 years all alone with no, no yeah, whatever? Oh, the and then, all, it was so great. Let me just tell you what, I went wild. I went back to see. You know, like when you turn a domesticated animal out and it goes back to wild, that's what happened to me. And it was and wonderful. Is back in the 60s, 70s? That was from about, oh my goodness, it was from probably about uh, 68 or 9. And just tell us a little detail. You went into the forest and you yeah. had what? No, you didn't have anything and what? Well, let's see, this is so long ago. Um, basically for 12 years, it was 12 years, there was no uh, radio, no television, no movies, no magazines. Um, I was living in the poorest county in Georgia up in the mountains. Um, it was so poor. Um, I got caught between the moonshining moors, which was very interesting with the long one because I love both camps. Um, I met the wild kids. There were wild kids living in the woods, kids that had been, who had run away from home and had banded together. Um, it was up there near one of the waterfalls that John Muir wrote about in his travels across America. And it was at a place where the flatland reaches the highland called Apple Pie Ridge up in Banks County, and, uh, North Georgia. And there was, um, if you study shamanism, I've been very blessed with great shamanic teachers. One who was the first cousin of Carlos Castaneda. You learn that where the magic happens is in the between, like in between day and night or night and day, uh, where the flatland reaches the highland. It's uh, a place where you leave the old and enter the new, but it's the in-between. And this was an in-between place. It was very, very ancient. So I was very, very gifted with these 12 years. And in these 12 years, there's so many miracles happened. And I guess I just got so humbled by the whole experience that um, I just, I kind of went into humble shock. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Where it just, the whole magnificence of God in nature. Mm. In its natural form, you know, before any roads, because I'm way back in the woods, um, just living with nature, and nature not just physically, but emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, actually, with the beings, supernatural beings that people think are only in fairy tales. Yeah. It, it was just amazing. I mean, it was, it just, oh my God, it was amazing. And then I had to come back and just, it was. Yeah. And then now let's, let's jump forward. Let's jump to where you and Michael were married, and t tell a little bit what you and Michael worked with the veterans, Vietnam veterans. Okay. I was rescued from the Moonshine War uh, by Michael, who was a doctor at the VA Medical Center in Tuskegee, Alabama. He was a psychologist there. He became head of the post-traumatic stress disorder clinic that's given the whole top floor of the mental hygiene building. But just to let you know what the... Uh, Moonshine Wars were back then. If there were, this is, I'm just telling you the way it is. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. This is just what I found. There were two groups of moonshiners. This was the poorest county in Georgia, and they, there was no jobs for people. There was only one doctor in the whole county. 
And so they made their money with moonshine, okay? And they had for generations. But they were the, what I would call the quote unquote good moonshiners and the bad moonshiners. And the good moonshiners, and believe me, I'm just a novice at this. I was on the outside looking in, but I'm just telling you what I know. When they made their stills, when they soldered the joints, they did not use lead. And the quote unquote bad moonshiners, who I love dearly, uh, would use lead in the solder, so their product would drive people insane with lead poisoning, okay? And the good moonshiners would not talk to the bad shiners because they knew all this stuff was going on, and they thought it was wrong that the bad moonshiners would put out this alcohol with lead poisoning, okay? But there was probably as many in the bad camp as the good camp, and I loved them all, and they all helped me. Um, and I just couldn't take sides. But up there, it was like these, uh, a lot of the combat vets that we worked with all those years at the VA Medical Center, when they have PTSD, and almost everybody does, it's like a state where you're either with me or, for, or against me. There's no middle ground. And it's like they could not let me be friends with both. In other words, I was either going to choose with the good ones or the bad ones. And since I couldn't and wouldn't, um, I was in a dangerous situation, and God saved my saved me by just plucking me out of that situation and putting me on the uh, campus at the VA Medical Center in Tuskegee, Alabama, for many years. I was married to uh, Michael for 25 years, and in that time, I got immersed in um, working with post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, at the time. Nothing worked. I will guarantee you, nothing worked. All they could do was drug them. Uh, they were of the mind that, you know, once you've been traumatized as bad, you take it to the grave, and the best we could do is give you drugs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the general suicide rate was around 6%. Well, Michael and I stormed the gates of heaven. I mean, keep in mind, I'd been out in the woods for 12 years with no contact with the outer world. I didn't see any of the movies. Didn't hear any of the popular music for 12 years. Didn't read any of the news going on. Didn't know what had gone out there. I just been immersed in this kind of shamanic immersion in nature. So I'm, you know, dropped down <laughs> in the middle of post-traumatic stress disorder with combat veterans from the home, right? And I'm having to learn all about this. And I just told Michael, I said, look, there is a cure for everything. Because I had seen it in the woods. I could tell you stories of miraculous healing that we saw, not only with people, but with animals. And I said, there is a way. And so we stormed the gates of heaven. And um, Alfred, you could explain that. And I'm sure you can, too, Franco, you know, how that happens when you speak and you shall find. And we had no suicide. We came up with a whole new way of clearing traumas permanently in one session that the guys could take out into the bush in a buddy system. And that technology is up on my website for free. And let's give your link. Yeah, and you have has my permission, because I now own the copyright to everything since he died 10 years ago. You have my express permission and my gratitude to copy it and use it. All you want. The more you do that, the better. And you know, I don't care if you give me credit or not. Just as long as this stuff gets out, because it saves lives. And what it is is, it's a one-session technology for clearing one trauma. You can only clear one trauma at a time. It takes anywhere from one hour to three hours generally. But it permanently clears the trauma. And so we would take these guys with their war traumas. And in one session, they could clear it permanently with no more flashbacks, no more nightmares. And we taught them how to do it with each other because the really worst cases wouldn't come into the clinic. So we'd have to teach the guys to take it out to the bush. But it worked. It worked every yeah. single time. And then we had, and, and the technology is up on my website, y'all. And let me give that, that website. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, and the link is on the blog, the Diamonds blog, but it's Spirit to Saintus, right? Dot com. And that's spiritisanctus.com. Yeah, so that's all spirit together. Yeah, and it means Holy Spirit. And wow. Spiritus, that's S P I R I T U S S 
A N C T U S dot com. Spirit Sanctus. Sanctus. And dot there com. are two DVDs. I did a weekend workshop explaining the trauma clearing thing, which was like two days, ten hours each, which has been wrenched down into two DVDs that are a little over an hour each. But they're yes. up on the blog. They're up on that website too, and you have my permission to copy and download and use those. And then also, we did talk a little bit about the eye movement, the uh, REM eye movement on uh, a few of the Diamonds calls, and we'll go more into detail of that and some other stuff, and the Law of One we've been talking about. But also on the SpiritsOfSanctus.com are her angel music. She's in the music, the angels of 360 degrees. You've heard about those all on the, each of the degrees around the earth. They were that music to play, listen to that, 90, the whole 90 minutes of each of them that helps to raise your vibrations. Also, she, she's a painter. She's got lots of paintings, and you can go on sacredpaintings.com. That's sacred, S-A-C-R-E-D-P-A-N-D-A-I-N-T-I-N-G-S.com. Beautiful, beautiful painting. And if you want those paintings, right-click on any one you want, download it, they're very high resolution, and then get prints made. Um, it won't cost you anything but whatever they charge you for the prints. If you want an original, <laughs> they're way up there. If you want an yes. original, they're like 18 grand. I mean, that's and Cynthia is also an expert uh, in uh, the Law of One prayer. We've been talking about that. A lot of people are interested in Cynthia, so we'll, we'll go into that later, too. I'm sure we'll get to that. So thank you so much, honey. Thank you, sweetheart. And stay tuned. All right, now I want to just engage all three of you guys. Um, first of all, I, Dr. Alfred, I know you have some questions for Franco. So what I want to do is bring you in, and if you want, you can ask Franco a question, and then Franco can answer, and then I'll have Cindy, at, Cynthia, at her not two cents, a million, or million dollars worth. How's that, Frank? Or Alfred, is that? Sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, that that's that that's fine. Okay. Talk a little bit up to the microphone a little bit more, hon. <clears throat> yeah. I you have to excuse me. My my voice is I I've been out with the flu for a couple of days, so my voice may be a little weak. I know. Just take your time. It's okay. So, do you have a good question for Franco? You've been burning to ask him. Well, I I'm just getting to know to know Franco. I. I'm at the other end. I'm on the left coast in Vancouver, Franco. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. Now, I I didn't quite understand the issue of the of the sixty souls that had merged. I didn't quite get that. Okay. Okay. Well. What happens is basically with the expansion process that takes place, uh, you, ha you have uh, the main soul, which is source itself, uh, that basically uh, keeps fragmenting and fragmenting and achieving certain levels and then it fragments some more. Uh, that process came to an end a while back. And now what's happening is that as each, because each person on the planet, then each being or any form that is on any planet, basically all have a soul. Now, each of these souls are just a fragment or uh, a singular fragment of one whole soul. What happens is when this particular soul, let's, let's play with the human realm right now. A soul that has been incarnating in a human form, you know, may have been reincarnating in human form for some time and has in one way or another also may have had the experience of being other, in other physicalities on other planets. Because, I mean, each and every planet is a schoolyard and a playground. That's all it is. It's a, it's a reality that is created as a collective for an experience. Now, so say a soul uh, in, in a human form uh, keeps reincarnating, has experiences, and continues to become more and more enlightened. You reach a point, you go from a human form or a human consciousness, which is basically very basic, and then each step, each time you incarnate, or it may take several times, or it may take hundreds of times before you get to one level, uh, you basically become more and more enlightened. And what that means is that you're basically remembering more and more who you are, but 
But at the same time, you're not just returning back where you started off, you're becoming very experientially rich, and then you also have much more, uh, what do you call, spectrums of consciousness and light that you gain. But once it comes to the point where, say, you take a human, the last split that occurred is basically, let's put it this way, each time a soul splits, it's basically a different signature. And the purpose of the signature is to have an isolated experience so that in essence, even if you're involved in the same environment, the same reality uh, with others, uh, you will perceive it slightly different. You will see other perspectives of it or what we call dimensions of it or you know, direction, whatever. Uh, the same photo or same experience, the same reality, so that you have a, a different experience. Now, the signature basically allows you to pick up a very uh, a specific uh, span or a strand of frequency so that even if you're walking into a pool of energy, you're able to decipher a small part of it. And as you expand, you get more part of it, but you still have that interpretation or that filtering process where you see it a specific way because each one of us wants to be very different we're also part of the whole. So in essence, you take a painting like Cynthia uh, does, I mean, every single stroke, every pigment within the painting is slightly different. There's none of them the same. Even if it's the same growth stroke, each one is slightly different. But when you put them all together, it makes that one beautiful mural or whatever it may be, that beautiful painting. That's the same thing with us. Basically, each one is a signature. Now, what happens is the final split that occurred is that the last soul that split, when I say last soul, the last fragment that occurred, the two halves, or the two that split, has identical signature. So they see things exactly the same. However, they went different directions. Now, one could be on the planet, one may be off the planet, one may be on a different planet, or they just incarnate different, at different times, taking on different physicalities, different experiences, even though they have the same filter point and they, they pick up the same frequency, they're having different experiences. Once the two souls have achieved enlightenment, they basically finished their journey of, of incarnation, then if the two are done, the two half souls merge. Now, people have talked about meeting your twin soul, and there's a lot of confusion on that. That would take a while to explain. But in essence, uh, basically, the two halves that have the identical signatures merge. Now, the other part of it is, I said the signatures are different. There is, like, they're, they're just basically close. So, in essence, when you're, those two have exact, exactly alike, but now you've got soul families. And the soul families are made up of, of a, a cluster of 12 with one nucleus, which carries the master code for that one soul family. And then the other 12, which all split up into two, so that makes up 24 fragments of the, the joint. So what happens is they all have similar signatures except for the last one digit or two digits, depending on, on what fragments they've created. So as those are completing, they start to merge and they become unified. So basically all the experiences of each soul, because the souls have memory of each and every life, every thing that it's learned and experienced and all the things that it's, it's been able to access in the various realities are now merged. So you become another level of one within those fragmented souls. And it just continues that process right back to when it becomes the one soul again. Basically what happens is source itself takes all the fragments itself with everything that it's experienced becomes one again, actually uses every facet of every experience and now becomes a even grander uh, uh, grander aspect of itself before it fragments and goes out again. So I gave you maybe more than you wanted to know about this, but then I just wanted to uh, kind of paint a picture for you of how that uh, basically works. Thank you, Franco. Let me just have Cynthia come yeah. in real quick, Alfred, Dr. Alfred, and yeah. Cynthia, what? you want to chime in yeah. on this? Anything you want to add? Wow, that was beautiful. I just want to thank you for that. That was magnificent. I feel really honored um, that, you know, just the 
frequency in energy. I guess the only thing with fate um, is that there is a a law that is the original law of the universe, and it overrides all lesser laws, and all laws come from it, and it resets DNA into exactly what he was just explaining. I'm, I'm just in awe of what you just said. And I'll just say it real quick. It goes like this. We are all one. When one is harmed, all are harmed. When one is helped, all are helped. Therefore, in the name of who I am, and I am one with all there is, I ask that only the highest good of all concerned happen, and I give thanks that this is done. And for those of you out there who are dealing with demonic forces, real or imagined, seen or unseen, if you will use this law, I think you'll be extremely pleased with the results. Because when you enter into the realm of alchemy, um, sometimes you run into these things. And sometimes they're ancient things, where there have been horrible wars and torture horrible things going on with animals and people in places like with the dreams of fracking. And sometimes, you know, just to heal that, and sometimes it's potential things that might happen in the future, and sometimes it's things that are actually going on at present time. And if you can address through intent all the participants, real or unreal, imagined or not, understood or not, being or not, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, just ask them, whatever is there, come in. And if you do this law with them, instead of going into fear or denial, um, or attack, I think you'll be surprised. I think you'll be amazed. And I think it'll handle anything you give it. Um, I learned this law back around 68. And back then in the old hippie days, People were tripping on very powerful LSD. And most of the people were into love and light, you know, which was not war, but there were some people who were delving into the occult arts. And they would get in over their heads really fast. And nobody could handle it because the psychic phenomenon was pretty intense. And I would be called in to do the law of one. I was just as scared as anybody else, and just like anybody else, but I knew the law of one, and I knew to address these things with great respect, because I knew that we were all one, and that God's love for them was equal to anything else. And I do the law of one, and it took care of it every time, right? Every everything was fine. And so I want to pass that on to y'all as my gift today, because I couldn't have made it without it. And yeah. if it doesn't work for you, fine, just throw it away. But if it does work for you, you'll keep using it. And it's really magnificent. Yeah, the fact you have to go. Yes, that's awesome. Because, you know, remember, even hate or anger or, you know, you want vendetta against somebody, the law of one, love works. We talked about it last week. Love conquers all. That's the code breaker. And the, well, people call them demons. It's just a less denser energy. To the, uh, or it's just a more denser energy compared to less denser energy, dark and light. And that just melts them. I mean, that gives them love. They've never, they haven't felt love, and it just melts them. And they conform to the law of one. It, all, the highest good for all concerns. Yes. Thank you, Cynthia. Could so I, I, you, uh, yeah. Alfred, yeah. Um, yeah. I yeah. Could I jump lot. in here? I have to listen to it again because I've listened yeah. to Yeah. Hello. Talk about that a lot, and it really sinks in. So, you want to add Hello. anything or any other thoughts? Or yeah, okay. yeah. This is a roundtable, so I've written on the soul as well. So, I would like to comment. Absolutely. Yeah, and and uh, what what Paula said about the soul. I think really for me is very, very valuable because I'm looking here at chapter seven in my book on the omniverse. Chapter seven is titled The Intelligent Civilization of Souls. And what I did here was take the replicable scientific evidence 
I'm not sure what the source of the information that Paolo just relayed to us is. And after I finish, I would be very interested in his sharing what his sources are. What I so did. You, it's, Cynthia, it's Cynthia and Franco. Who are you referring to, Cynthia or Franco? Franco. Oh, what's for, you want to know the source you got it from, Franco? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. What, when I finish. Yes, but, when you finish. Go ahead, honey. Yeah. What I'm doing now is sharing from my writings and my information on the intelligent civilization of souls, which I. The sources I'm using is, are the published sources on 7,000 uh, cases of uh, replicable, uh, 7,000 replicable cases gathered according to a standard protocol about um, uh, soul memories of the afterlife and uh, that did that give as much as possible direct access to uh, what over 7,000 souls are saying about the afterlife according to a standard protocol so that you can correct for that information over that large number of cases and um, uh, and so uh, what what we find is con consistent uh, with what Franco says, although what, what Franco focused on in his particular passage is one aspect of soul development. We focus on some of the basics in chapter seven. But the conclusions, I think, are, are the same, but we used, a, we used a different database and a different technology, which is replicable databases and scientific protocols. And I'm just reading here from page 145. Number one, the nature and origin of souls as holographic eggs of light from the sea of light that is the creator source, Karen God. Two, the origin and function of the universes of the exopolitical dimensions as a virtual experiential development environment for souls. Number three, the development education of souls through groups in the interlife. We, we call the, the, what some people call the afterlife dimensions, the interlife. Four, the process of soul development through incarnation into a physical body or avatar in a universe of the exopolitical dimensions as an exopolitical species, human, mammalian, reptilian, avian, etc. Number five, the specific steps in the incarnation process include the key role of guides, trained souls assigned to each incarnating soul, selecting a future physical life, including technological sampling of lives, rehearsal and recognition classes for chosen future lives with incarnating soulmates, teleportation in a normal incarnation and birth through an interdimensional portal from the interlife dimensions into the exopolitical dimensions to coordinate next to the womb of the prospective mother and meshing into the fetus of the soul's new life about three months prior to birth, the final trimester. In other words, these are regularities that one discovers over 7,000 cases. Uh, next, in unusual cases, a single soul may lead simultaneous different physical lives in different locations of the exopolitical dimensions. In other words, uh, I can be, my soul can be leading simultaneous uh, lives as in, in an avatar as a human Alfred on Earth, as a reptilian on some other dimension, as some other, you know, leading three or four lives at once. In normal cases, at physical death, 
the soul teleports back through an interdimensional portal into the interlife. And unless an advanced soul is met by guides, family, and friends, etc., <clears throat> uh, a life review period follows with guides and a council of elders, including holographic review of life episodes for karmic lessons. The soul enters a transition period for further education, new soul career as guide, healer, new life planning, etc. <clears throat> placement of the soul in this new area of activity and where necessary and starting of a new life selection process. And th this, this chapter go, goes on and on, <coughs> mainly of the regularities that we found in the interlife processes by examining over 7,000 cases of us soul memories of the interlife gathered according to standard protocols. It's just a different methodology. I'm, a, I'm approaching this from the standard scientific methodology. And my purpose is to begin to bring this knowledge because my experience has been knocking on the doors of universities here in Canada, in the United States, worldwide, is that they are firmly closed as to this. The only, as to this information, the closest that I've gotten is that Oxford, Oxford University Press, which is a division of the University of Oxford, England, uh, approached me to write a book on extraterrestrials and the law. And when I took up that project, uh, I discovered that there was not in the, in the public domain an adequate typology for extraterrestrial life. All of them in, in the public domain were extremely inadequate and very earth oriented, not multiverse oriented. And it was that work, out of that work, grew my book on the Omniverse. But that's as close as I've gotten to any university. They are gatekeepers on any of this information. Uh, 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 so. Uh, Dr. Alfred? Yeah, yeah, so that is. I want to honor you. I want to honor you at this time. Oh, my God. That had to take a lot of physical effort to do all that research and then write the book. Oh, my God. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your service to humanity. And now, today, we're coming together and talking about this. You have to be astounded. So I, I'm hoping this is making you happy. We're three of them. Three of, us, three of you guys and all of us are listening. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. So, the, the, yeah, so our, our minds coming together, our, our, our minds that are active in these different areas on slightly different planes. So I just wanted to give a full context of the area that I've been active in, and that is attempting to get this area into the mainstream uh, because that's, that's where the matrix powers have been blocking uh, and attempting to censor any of the multi-dimensional information from the mainstream educational area so as to make my control slaves of the population. And, well, I tell you what, Dr. Yeah. Alfred, you're in the upgrade today and we're making headway today. And uh, at break time, which is in about 45 minutes, 50 minutes, I'm going to bring a surprise on for all of you. And we are in the upgrade. We're making headway today. It's not blocked anymore, Dr. Alfred and Lambert Webb. Yay! Okay. So, did Franco and Cynthia want to follow up on just that, and we'll go to another question, you know, like a minute or two each. Is that okay, Alfred? Oh, sure. On what Alfred said? 
Yeah, what I what I also what you read there, uh, what you described from from uh, the experiments and so forth, uh, are very accurate to what I've seen. Now I know you asked me the resource, my source. Uh, basically, my source is what my soul screen, and because the soul has so many different resources of what it can access, and it is fully enlightened, it basically has that. There, I have not studied any of this. Now, I have done life regression for people over the 35 years, uh, hundreds upon hundreds of life regressions, but usually it was more to address past lives and, and look at karmic uh, uh, things that were playing out for them and so forth that had not been cleared and so forth when we were through that process. But in essence, what you've described is what I know, seen, experienced, because I do leave the body very often. Uh, every day, if not three times a day sometimes. But uh, in essence, all those realms that you've described. Now, there has been some alterations and some modifications and upgrades, basically, uh, even to the law of one uh, and the law of, uh, of that has been upgraded to the sense where, in essence, when you're looking at things, it's, uh, it, it is whatever you do affects every aspect of yourself because every single soul is an aspect of you. Uh, and and uh, regardless of this environment or any environment or, or this playground or any playground, because we're all connected at all levels, uh, whatever decision you make. However, one of the things that has uh, shifted is that everything is shifted to to an understanding of that everything is experience. There's no right or wrong, good or bad. Uh, it doesn't matter what role you play. However, there is an expiration date and is uh, uh, an upgrade, which, uh, Alfred, I think you have talked about in one of your shows, which was when we did shift uh, December 21st, 2012, we went to a slightly more positive timeline, which was basically a merging of timelines and a collapsing of timelines at the same time, creating a one, one timeline, which is basically completely fluid moment by moment. Uh, during, that, during that process that had occurred, when we went through that stage uh, of uh, change, uh, all 